The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. Therefore, when you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmayo at ybcc.edu and I'll respond as soon as I can. By the end of the quarter, you should have this memorized. You'd think I would too. All right, we're gonna go on and take a look at section 6.4. But before we do that, do you have any questions from Friday's homework? Anything you wanna look at? Um, no, I watched the video. I did end up having to like watch some different videos as well, because I was slightly confused, but I got it. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Well, then we'll go on to section 6.4. And there are two topics today we're gonna to talk about. The first one is factoring perfect square trinomials. So let's take a look at that. First of all, let's review what a perfect square trinomial is. Well, a perfect square is a number that has two identical factors. So like 0, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Those are all perfect squares because it's 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, etc. So these are perfect squares. Now, a perfect square trinomial would have two identical factors. So like x plus 3 squared, which is x plus 3 times x plus 3 which is x squared plus 6x plus 9. So this is called a perfect square trinomial because it has two identical factors, or x minus 5, the quantity squared, which is x minus 5 times x minus 5, or x squared minus 10x plus 25. This is a perfect square trinomial because it has two identical factors. OK, now. There are several characteristics of pur purple, perfect square trinomials, and I'm going to just talk about two of them. And that is that they both have to have a square at the beginning and a square at the end, and they both have to have a plus sign before the end term. Now, this term here can be a plus or a minus, but it has to start with a square, end with a square, and there has to be a plus sign in front. If it meets all of those conditions, then it might be a perfect square. But if it doesn't meet all of those, those conditions, then it cannot be a perfect square. If it meets the conditions, then we go further to determine if it is a perfect square. And we'll look at that right now. So let's say we've got this x squared plus 14x plus 49. This is a trinomial. It starts with a square, it ends with a square, and it has a plus sign in front of the last term. So it meets all of those conditions. Let's determine for sure if it is. Well, if it's a perfect square, it has to have two identical factors. So the x's would get broken up like that. The 49 would get broken up like that. And what sign would have to be in the middle? A plus sign. So this gives me x squared plus 7x plus 7x plus 49. Ah, 7x plus 7x is 14x. So yes, this is a perfect square. Okay with that? All right, let's take a look at this one. y squared plus 4y plus 16. Well, it starts with a square and ends with a square and there's a plus sign in front. So, so far so good. But if it's gonna be a perfect square, we're gonna break up the y's like that. We're gonna break up the 16 like that. And it's gonna to have to be a plus and a plus, but in the middle we would get what? Eight y, right? So this is not a perfect square. Now, it might or might not be factorable but it's not a perfect square. So we can't just streamline it and say, oh, we can factor it that way, which is much easier to do, okay? Uh, how about this one? 9a squared 
minus 48a minus 64. Well, 9a squared is a perfect square, 3a times 3a. 64 is a perfect square, a times a, but oh, it doesn't have a plus sign. So this is not a perfect square, okay? And finally, we'll look at one more example, 9y squared minus 30y plus 25. It starts with a square, ends with a square, and there's a plus sign there. So it look, it's looking good so far. 9y squared would be 3y and 3y. I can't talk. 25 would be 5 and 5. But to get a minus 30y in the middle, what sign would have to go in the middle of both factors? A minus sign. So let's see, we get 9y squared minus 15y minus 15y plus 25, and there's our minus 30y. So yes, that's a perfect square, and there it is factored. Why even bother with perfect squares? Well, because if this one is a perfect square, it's easier to factor this than to use the grouping or the trial and check method, you know? So you wanna check for that first because it's quicker and easier if it's gonna work. All right, uh, let's see here. How about this one? 9x squared minus 48xy plus 64 y squared. Uh, let's see if we can factor this thing as a perfect square. Well, 9x squared is a perfect square. 64y squared is a perfect square. And there's a plus sign there, so that's good. So it meets all of those conditions. So let's see if we can figure that out. Sorry, I gotta move my phone, it's buzzing. So 9x squared would be 3x, and 3x, right? 24y squared would be 8y and 8y. Now, to get minus 48y, or excuse me, xy in the middle, I would need a minus sign here and here, wouldn't I? So let's see, we get 9x squared minus 24xy minus 24xy plus 64y squared, 9x squared minus 48xy plus 64y squared, and it checks. So we could write our answer like this, or we could write it like that, because that says we have two factors of this base. Good on that? All right, so that's perfect square trinomials. Uh, let's see, let's look at one more of these. Uh, okay, so we've got 3v squared minus 42v plus 147. Well, this just does not look like a perfect square, does it? However, we should first take out the greatest common factor. Let's see, what is that? 14 and plus um, that, that's supposed to be a V. If we take out the greatest common factor first, well, now we've got a trinomial with a leading coefficient of a one, but still it looks like it could be a perfect square, right? So we'd have what a seven and a seven, but the middle term is negative. So it'd have to be a minus and a minus. Is that gonna give us what we need? That'd be minus seven V, minus seven V gives us minus 14 V. So that is the correct answer, or you could write it like that. All right, so there's dealing with perfect square trinomials. Now, the next thing we're gonna look at is called the difference of two squares. 
So let's go back to chapter five, which we didn't actually cover in this course, but then let's consider something like this. Let's say I've got x plus three times x minus three. So I have the sum of two numbers times the difference of two numbers. And the two numbers are in the same order. What happens when we foil them together? x times x is x squared. x times minus 3 is minus 3x. Three, 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. But now when we combine like terms, the two terms in the middle cancel each other out, and we're left with this. Now, this is called the difference of two squares because we have a difference, subtraction, of one square, two squares. X squared minus three squared. Okay. In fact, X squared minus three squared. Notice that the bases of the squares are these two numbers here, the x and the three, okay? So what that means is that if I have this, and it is in fact the difference of two squares, I can factor it into the sum of the two bases times the difference of the two bases, okay? So let's take a look at examples of that. All right, so let's say we've got 49d squared minus 16. Is it a binomial? Notice we're looking at two terms now, not trinomials. Yes, it's a binomial. Is there a subtraction sign in the middle? Yes, so it's a difference. Are the two terms squares? In other words, could I write it like this? Yeah, 49d squared would be 7d, the quantity squared, and 16 would be 4, the quantity squared. Now, writing it like this isn't factoring it the way we want, but it does this for us. First of all, it's it shows that yes, this is the difference of two squares. And secondly, it tells us what to put in here. 7d goes first, 4 goes last. The sum and the difference of those two bases. Now, we cannot write this like this because they aren't identical, are they? They aren't both plus or both minus, so don't do that, okay? So our answer is just that. Okay, how about this one? Let's see here. Come on, move on, there we go. 400z squared minus one. Well, again, can I write it that way? 400 is 20 squared, z squared is z squared, and one is one squared. So I'm gonna get the sum of 20z plus one times the difference 20z minus one, and there's my final answer. So we're factoring the difference of two squares. Okay. Let's see here. How about this one? 4x squared minus z to the fourth power. Hmm. Well, 4x squared is 2x the quantity squared. Z to the fourth could be written as Z squared squared. Okay. So now I've got 2X plus Z squared times 2X 
minus z squared. Well, let's take a look at this factor. That's a difference, and z squared is a square, but oh, that's not a square, is it? No. Okay, so, so that would be our final answer. Okay, what about this one? Negative, whoops, that's not what I wanted to use. I want to go back here to that. Negative 121b to the fourth plus 36a squared. Is this the difference of two squares? No, it's not. So there's two different things we can do, and I'm going to take us through both of them. The first one, let's do this. Let's factor out a negative. So I get negative times 121b to the fourth minus 36a squared. Okay. So then let's see, what would we have? we'd have 11b squared and 6a. So we have a negative sign and then 11b, ah, 11b squared plus 6a, 11b squared minus 6a. So we could have that answer, okay? Any questions about that? All right, let's look at it a different way. We could rearrange the two terms. And now it is the difference of two squares. So we've got what? Um, let's see here, 6a, 11b squared. So 6a plus 11b squared, 6a minus 11b squared. And these two answers are equivalent. Let me show you. This one is the same as that one. Addition is commutative, right? So you could take these two terms and switch them and it would match that. These two are not the same, but if I take this negative sign and distribute it, I get negative 11b squared plus 6a, which is plus 6a minus 11b squared. So they are equivalent. And it's not that one is better than the other, just either way you choose to go, okay? All right, now let's see here. Let's take a look at some more examples. 2a squared minus 200b squared. What about this? Is this the difference of two squares? Well, it's a binomial. It's got a subtraction sign, but can I do that? Not yet, but before we consider that, we should take out the greatest common factor. Ah, now the leftovers are the difference of two squares. So we have two times a plus 10b times a minus 10 b. So it was the difference of two squares after we took out the greatest common factor, which you always want to do first anyway. All right, we good? Antonio, you okay? Keep it up. Okay, got it. Okay, thank you. Okay. You need me to slow down, yell at me or something. Right. <laughs> I will, thank you. All right. What about this one? y to the fourth power minus 625. Wow. Well, that's a binomial with a subtraction sign in front of it. y to the fourth power could be written as y squared squared. Hmm. Is 625 a perfect square? Take the square root of it. You know, take the square root, take the square root of it, see what you get. Is it a perfect square? What do you get? 
I'm pulling up my calculator right now. Sorry, okay. I'm getting the call. All righty, all righty. <laughs> so take the square root of 625. See what you get. No? 312.5 is what I got on here, right? Mm. Or no? Okay, on your calculator, do you have a button that looks like this? I got um, 39625. No, that's not right either. On your calculator, do you have a button that looks like that? Mm. 25. 25, there you go. <laughs> Antonia? Well, yeah. Yes, I do have it. Okay, so take the square root of 625. Let me see. Oops. Mm, this one I might come to calculator and let me see. Are you using your phone? No, my calculator. Um, the Texas instrument. Okay. Yeah, so, I, I'm using my phone. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> this so, one, it doesn't want to work. Okay. So, Antonia, do you have a button that looks like that? It's got an X squared. Yes, I do have one. And the second function looks like that? Yes. So, you got to push the second function key. Uh huh. And then that shows up. And then you put in 625, close it up, and push equals. Oh, okay. Let me see. Oh, okay. Okay. 625 and then equals. Okay. Got it. What'd you get? 25. Yay. Okay. Thank you. No you bet. <laughs> okay. So what that means is this is going to be y squared squared minus 25 squared. Okay. So our factors are going to be y squared plus 25, y squared minus 25. But wait, there's more. Take a look at that. Isn't that the difference of two squares? Yeah, that would be y squared minus five squared. So this is gonna be y plus five, y minus five. Well, what about this? Is that the difference of two squares? Is it the difference? No, it's the sum of two squares, okay? It doesn't factor. So we get that. Now, do you see how this factored further into that? Let's take a look at just this individually and see why it doesn't factor. So let's just deal with y squared plus 25. I mean, that is... I suppose we could call it the sum of two squares. Well, let's see, what if I try y plus five times y minus five? That's gonna give me y squared minus 25, right? Which doesn't match, okay? What if I make them both plus? Oh, well now we've got a perfect square trinomial, y squared plus 10y plus 25, so that doesn't match. What if we do y minus five times y minus five? Well, that gives us y squared minus 10y plus 25. This is prime. So back here, we can't factor it any further. That doesn't mean that this is prime because we did factor it. It just means this doesn't factor any further. Okay. So you wouldn't, it would not be correct to say this is prime. Right, excuse me, this. But let's say I just had this problem y squared plus 25, that would be prime, okay? Now, I almost want to say, or maybe you want to say, oh, so the difference of two squares factors, but the sum of two squares doesn't factor. Uh, wait a sec, just be careful. What about this? Is that the sum of two squares? Yes, it is. Can I factor it? 
Yes, I can in that I can take out a greatest common factor. So once you've removed any greatest common factor, if what you have left is the sum of two squares, you can't factor it any further. But this is not prime because we did take out the greatest common factor. This is prime because we can't factor it at all. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see here. How about this one? m to the fourth power, n to the fourth power, minus 16. m to the fourth would be m squared squared. n to the fourth would be n squared squared. And 16 would be 4 squared. So yes, I can write it as the difference of two squares. So now, the factors are m squared n squared plus 4, m squared n squared minus 4. Ah, but wait, we're not done. As a famous baseball player once said, it ain't over till it's over, because this is also the difference of two squares. m n, the quantity squared, to the quantity squared. So we get m squared n squared plus 4, and then m n plus 2, m n minus 2. Okay. Any questions there? All right, so now we're going to mix them up. We're going to have some problems that are perfect squares. We're going to have some problems that are difference of two squares. How about this one? S squared T squared minus 20 S T plus 100. It's a trinomial. So we're looking for a perfect square. Let's see here. S squared T squared would split apart S T and S T. 100 would split apart 10 and 10. But the middle term is negative. So they'd have to both be negative. Does that give me minus 20 ST in the middle? Yes, it does. So here is the correct answer. Or you can write it like that. OK. Uh, let's see here. Z squared minus 64. This is not a perfect square trinomial. It's not even a trinomial. It's a binomial. Is it the difference of two squares? Well, let's see. Z squared minus eight squared, Z plus eight, Z minus eight. Can I factor it any further? This is a difference, but it's not the difference of two squares. So, oops. So there's our final answer. Okay, let's see here. Eighty one P squared minus thirty six P Q plus four Q squared. This is a trinomial. Is it a perfect square trinomial? Well, it starts with a square and ends with plus a square. So, so far so good. So we'd have what, 9P and 9P, 2Q and 2Q, but the middle term is negative. So the two middle terms have to be negative. Well, there's my 81P to the four uh, squared and there's my plus 4Q squared at the end. But what about this and this? This is what? Minus 18PQ, minus 18PQ is minus 36PQ. So yes, it checks. Or again, 9P minus 2Q, the quantity squared. Okay. 
Uh, what about this one? 25 y squared plus 16. Anything I can do there? It's a binomial. Is there a greatest common factor? Nope. So does the sum of two squares, once any greatest common factor has been removed, does it factor? No, it doesn't. So it's prime. Okay, let's take a look at this one. 5a to the fourth minus 80b to the fourth. This is a binomial. It's a difference. Hmm. Is it the difference of two squares? Not yet, because 5 and 80 aren't squares. But if I take out the greatest common factor, now, let's see here, a squared squared minus 4 squared. So I get a squared plus 4, a squared minus 4. Oh, what have I forgotten? I've forgotten the Bs. Okay. Oh, but look, this is also the difference of two squares. So we've got this. And this. And then what about this? That's a difference of a binomial, but it's not two squares, is it? So finally we're done. You all right with that? All right, now we're going to look at some problems that go back. They may include stuff from 6.1 or 6.2 or 6.3 or 6.4. Oh boy, fun times ahead. How about this one? X squared plus X minus 42. Ah, it's a trinomial. It's in standard form. There's no greatest common factor. It has a leading coefficient of a one. It's not a perfect square, is it? But we need a product that's negative 42 and a sum that's one. How about seven and negative six? Now, we don't have to use that trial and check or grouping because the leading coefficient is a one. So when we find those numbers, they just go right in the answer. Okay, that was out of 6.2. All right. We good to go on? Okay, what about this one? Rx minus Sx plus R minus S. Well, this is four terms. What do we typically do with four terms? Factoring by grouping. There's no greatest common factor. Let's break it up and see what happens. The greatest common factor of the first two terms is X with R minus S left over. So this would have to be R minus S left over and a plus one out front. So we get R minus S times X plus one. All right, with that. So that's out of section, what, 6.1? And what about this one? X squared minus nine. Ah, this is a binomial. There's no greatest common factor. Ah, x squared minus three squared, so x plus three, x minus three. Difference of two squares. Okay, how about this one? Three a squared minus four a minus four. This is a trinomial in standard form. 
no greatest common factor. It's not a perfect square trinomial. All right, uh, Karina, I can't remember. Did you like the trial and check or the grouping better? I personally like the grouping. Trial and check really confused me. Okay, how about you, <laughs> Antonia? Did you have a preference? Nope, okay. I, it must have been somebody else that was here on Friday that prefer, preferred the other one. But So we'll go ahead and use grouping. So A is 3, B is negative 4, C is negative 4, the product is negative 12, and the sum is negative 4. And the numbers are negative 6 and 2. Negative 6 times 2 is negative 12. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So now I'm gonna split the middle term into minus 6a plus 2a. Break it apart for grouping. Greatest common factor of the first two terms, 3a with an a minus two left over. So we've got an a minus two left over and a plus two outside. So that gives us a minus two times 3a plus two. like that. Right. Let's, let's stretch your minds a little bit here. How about this one? P squared plus P plus one fourth. Ugh. Well, this is a trinomial in standard form. Is it, a, is it a perfect square trinomial? Let's see, is that a square? Careful, is that a square? One half times one half would be one fourth. Ah, and it has a plus sign, so let's see. So this would be what, a half and a half, and a plus and a plus. So I'd get my P squared up front and my half times a half is a fourth at the end. What about in the middle? A half P plus a half P is a whole P. So that, or you could write it like that. So, or. Let's see here. I think that's enough torture for one day, don't you? Yeah, yeah. All right, well, I'm gonna stop the recording.